Good afternoon, and welcome to the Modern Homesteading Podcast. I'm Rachel Jamison. I'm one of the hosts for the podcast, and I'm here with Dave and Sonia. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Sonia? Sonia, it's fine. Sonia. Yes. Sonia. And they have a YouTube and website called Off Grid with Dave and Sonia. So I wanted to interview you guys because um, we actually have met in person, but um, we met actually online. So, and you guys are doing some really cool stuff. And um, I thought my first question would be was what got you started in homesteading? I think um, back when I had my, my first child, I was 20 years old and I kind of was like, what do, what do I do with this little person? And um, I, I, something kicked in for me and it was like, if I can't get to the store, if I can't afford, I can't whatever, you know, what can we do to provide for the family? And it kind of started, um, our first home was in, in Pontiac. We had a little tiny backyard, but it was a full garden. I ended up making it a full garden. And um, now I got the garden and I'm like, what do I do with all these tomatoes? What do I do with, uh, you know, I did, I had no clue that if I planted 10 tomato plants, right. That's a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> and so his grandma, um, canned. And so she kind of took me under her wings and kind of gave me the rundown of it. And then, um, yeah, it just kind of escalated from there. Um, you know, after the garden, what else can I do to provide for my family? And so, we just kind of, that's how it kind of started. And then when we bought this property, you know, we're out in the country, we're only on five acres, but we've had chickens and quail. I've got a garden big enough to feed the neighborhood. Um, and it just kind of, that's kind of how it got started for us. Wanting to be able to provide for our family was, that's kind of how we got started. That's great. I mean, I think of tomatoes are also how I started canning. So, um, Chickens are the gateway it's to um, homesteading. I think tomatoes might be the gateway to canning. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. A glut of tomatoes or beans. Yeah. Um, so how long has that been then for you guys? You guys, I know you guys are have children similar ages as mine. Matt's 29 years old. Okay, yeah. Um, so so like 28 years. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. just right about the time of me becoming a mom, I just... I, something switched and I just, I don't know. I can't explain it. Same, um, same. Yep. <laughs> I, same thing. Um, I needed to learn how to, there was things that I just inside, I need to learn how to hunt. I needed to know that I could do it. And I, and once I did it, I'm like, cool, I know how to do it. Right. Um, even like grains, you know, buying the wheat berries and the different grains and knowing what to do with them. Um, it just, I don't was, know, it's weird. Actually, that was probably another kick in the pants was the 2000 Y2K. Yeah. yeah. So we prepared oh, yeah. a yeah. little bit more for Y2K. But yeah. looking back, it's like we really weren't prepared, but we had, you know, we had a couple things put aside, but it just right. kind of, it seems like it, things just evolved and you just, you know, once you learn how to do tomatoes, it's, oh, well, I can do this. And then once I learned how to can, I was like, really, you can can meat? Right. And it just made me think when I went down the grocery store aisle, it's like, I wonder if I could make that with all, without all the crap in it. Right. Exactly. Yes. And so that's, it just, it just seems like it just snowballed after that. And then, um, and then you get addicted to the flavor. Right. <laughs> it's so well, much better. Yeah. And then we had a little bit of a, um, a learning curve because our daughter, uh, later on in life was diagnosed with celiacs. And yeah. so they, my husband and the kids hike the Adirondack Mountains. And so how do you send them out into the woods, the mountains, and they don't have food? And so it just evolved learning how to do this stuff, which led us into the freeze drying. And then once you learn the nutritional value of freeze drying versus uh, canning, it's like, well, if we're growing this organic stuff, what's the best way to, to preserve it? Right. And yeah. so it just, it just the way things evolve, it's just kind of, yeah, just kind of snowball for us. Yeah. That's a whole nother, you know, that's like you, you end up going down on these rabbit holes as a, as a homesteader. I mean, especially yeah. when you start doing it, not just to store up food, but also for nutrition. 
Right. You start thinking, oh, well, I mean, canning works. It it works really well, but like you said, freeze drying, I mean, you're retaining so many of the vitamins and yet, you know, I don't want to discourage people from canning, but the freeze drying is super cool. It's like one of my, it's on my want list, but yeah, it's further down the list at this point. (laughs) And there's things that we prefer canned or dehydrated over freeze dried. So the thing is, is just knowing, you know, like I can't make my fruit leathers in the freeze dryer. I can't make jerky in the freeze dryer. Um, yeah. So it just, as you learn more things, it just evolves from there. And then we kind of have this thing now with the whole, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the weather and the electricity. And that's kind of how, you know, we got going with the trailer was, and now we have this little grandbaby that grandma now has kicked in. And it's like, if we lose power in the middle of the winter, right. Somewhere to keep this baby warm. Well, and Um, you guys live, you guys live in Michigan. Like I do though, you live further down state, but earlier this year, we were given warnings of having rolling blackouts. Yeah. 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 And, um, so it's, you know, that's, I think that unfortunately is happening in a lot of places. And I have friends living in, um, other places. And I even have a child living somewhere else that they have rolling blackouts. So you do, you have to homesteading has become very self-sufficient in the last several years you have to kind of learn yeah at least to get by for a few weeks right yeah Yeah. we were talking to mark last night and and i was saying that one of the other things that really jump-started me was i I remember either we had a vehicle down or we were only had one vehicle and i wanted to make uh pudding for the baby you know my my little toddler Mm -hmm. went to the cupboard and i didn't have pudding and it kind of i was like First of all, who doesn't have pudding in their cupboard when they have children around? So then I was a little upset that I didn't have pudding. And then I was like, you know what? how would my grandma have done this? Right. right. Grandma didn't have pudding. And so I flipped through my, my grandma's old cookbook and I'm like looking at the recipe and I'm like, really? It's cornstarch and milk and whatever flavoring. And so it was like, okay, how many other things do we buy that we could simply make if we had a few things in our pantry? Right. And so, yeah. And then once you start reading the ingredients label, it's like, man, look at all this crap that's in there. Right. You can't even pronounce it. Yeah. Well, food coloring. Why is there food coloring? Like, for instance, Pedialyte. Yeah. Why is there food coloring in Pedialyte when you're giving that to a dehydrated child? Yeah. And so it's just those kind of things that just, like I said, it snowballs. Yeah. Well, it, you know, grandma and great grandma, I have my great grandmother's cookbook from like 1900. Um, but they had a deep pantry Mm -hmm. and you know, I, I, I have a deep pantry. Number one, I'm celiac like you guys are. And so I just went to our local store for the first time. I hardly ever go to the store anymore, but for the first time in a, in a long time and, um, they don't have gluten-free flours. So I have to order those in bulk. Right. Well, there's the start of my deep pantry is having all of these flours. And with gluten-free, if people aren't aware, you typically to bake with gluten-free, it does better if you have many different flours than if you just use one, unlike when you're doing it with wheat. As you know, since you're a baker, and that's right. you know that was the other thing I wanted to talk about too, is um, you guys have... Um, have had traditional jobs in the past, but currently you don't. And I wanted to talk about the different things that you do. One of the things you do, Sonia, Sonia, is um, you bake beautiful cakes. I've seen them. They're just amazing. And, um, and then you guys have your freeze dryer. I don't know if you're using that as a business. A lot of people do. And I know that Dave, you're doing your, you're doing the solar, which was one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys on here and some, I heard last night you talking at, on Mark's show, which I should mention what it is. It's Mark uh, Baker's Green Acres. Farm Experience, yeah. Baker's Green Acres. And um, you were talking, you were doing some handyman stuff too. So what are you guys doing to be, you, you've removed yourself from the work world and now you're full-time homesteaders and um slash farmers slash lots of hats going on here so how are you guys doing that it's like the dream come true for most homesteaders and I know that it's probably challenging well I think for the big thing is you know the cakes is a a 
a little bit of an income, bartering for services. And really from day to day, I mean, he might be cutting grass. You know, I might be doing something different. You know, who knows what we're doing? Okay. So. Yeah, we've, we've been planning for years and we started the trailer a couple of years ago, but we've also been planning on cutting expenses. So we don't have internet. I'm sorry, we do have internet. We don't have cable. Okay. Um, we got rid of cable, I don't know, five years ago. But I mean, that's just a... All the reoccurring expenses, we tried to cut back what we could. Cable right. is just an... Uh, I mean, that's just a sucker of time. <laughs> it, it is. Just, I mean, if you figure you sit and watch TV two hours a night, I mean, that's probably very little time for a lot of people. A lot of people, the TV's right. on, they sit. I mean, you multiply it out, that's 20, 25 hours a week that you just, yeah. 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 So the cable was not a big deal. Um, so when we had talked that to reduce expenses even further, we could sell the house <laughs> and live on right. You know, well, then you get rid of a lot more reoccurring expenses, your electricity, your heat, your home insurance. Well, that's the thing is, I mean, we have this huge house and it's like, we don't need it. You know, our son and daughter-in-law live 20 minutes from here. They're not coming back home. You know, my son and or my daughter and her husband, he's in the military. Um, she's not going to be here forever. He's going to be coming back home. So we kind of, when we first started doing this, we thought, oh, well, we'll sell the house. There's enough money in the house that, you know, we'll just travel. And um, then we've got this little grandbaby now that, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just. Kind of hard to leave. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and we get him a couple of days a week. And so we're just trying to figure out life. Um, we Yeah, this much. middle age thing with adult yeah. children, they don't yeah. talk about, they I know it's rough. We, we both did it with little kids. But this age is, it's a whole different kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to figure out which direction to go. And so our daughter, which I think you met Paige, the one that yes. just kind of said hi, um, yeah. her and her husband are very much into what we've already kind of got going on. And they actually want to do a little bit more with the larger animals. Okay. So the current talk right now is to kind of have her and her husband stay at the one end of our house, pay off their, you know, get some of her college debt down, continue doing what we're doing here, you know, kind of minimizing what we have and then selling here and then kind of going in on a property with the kids. So we're basically kind of reversing roles. They would be kind of like, you know, head of the household and we would help them do things. We would downsize significantly, but still be able to help the kids with right. the gardening and the animals and the canning. And, um, it would still give us kind of a home. Right. And then still assist the kids on getting their, you know, helping them with their dream. Yeah. That makes so much sense to me. I, you know, I think this is what we did generations ago is we didn't all go off into little right sections. and I'm not saying that's wrong for people, but I do, right. think I, I see that happening yeah. more and more in the homestead movement is um families or at least parts of families living either close together or on the same property that's actually why we don't actually need the 20 acres we purchased but we were hoping one of the kids would come along and <laughs> do what your kids want to do we'll see yeah. what happens right. none of them have said they do yet so but so that's that's really cool though that's navigating um towards retirement age the finances and then somebody else. Cause that homesteading stuff gets hard. I mean, my husband and I are doing everything ourselves on two properties right now. Yeah. And uh, it's very physically demanding. And um, as we age, we know we won't be able to continue that. Okay. No, it's, it's hard. So, right. what do you, so you guys are doing all sorts of stuff and that is kind of what led you into the solar. Plus you wanted to travel yeah. So tell me about your solar adventures and I have, do you have any plans to expand some of that to your home? I know doing what you've done, you've learned a lot. So maybe now you feel more comfortable adding it to your home. And I, and I did hear you mention that you have built a little rolling battery backup yeah. system. So I'd That's love to hear all about those. So the, it, it basically started with a Harbor Freight unit. So they're $150 back then, although we bought ours at a garage sale. So I was looking at them, never bought one, and I found at a garage sale. 
And I think we paid twenty dollars for it. And then it wasn't working either, so I had to fix it. So I'm good at fixing a lot of stuff. So there was a chip on the inside that was burned up. I replaced it. So and see, that's another unit. What do you mean by unit? Like, because I know nothing about sol solar, so this is probably good that I'm asking you these questions. Yeah. So on the on the cheap Harbor Freight unit, it comes with three solar panels. Each panel was 150. I'm sorry, it was 15 watts. Okay. So a total of 45 watts. Which and is they, small. And they have a charge controller. So there's two different kinds of charge controllers. And obviously there's a cheap one and a, and a better one. Harbor Freight was a cheap one. So they call that a pulse width modulation, PWM unit. And it was it's a cheap one. It just connects directly to the battery okay. and it just charges it. It's it's kind of dumb. <laughs> but this wasn't a cheap one. So they're they're not high tech. And that's what, what I learned on, but because it was simple and cheap to burn off, they sold a garage sale, we bought it. The newer ones, they optimize performance and stuff. They call those MPPTs, multi-point power tracking. Okay. So those are a lot more sophisticated. You get a lot more power output from them. But I learned on the Harbor Freight unit, we made what Sonia calls this little robot. Basically, it was a dolly that I had batteries mounted to. And then the three panels I could take out and just put in the yard, put anywhere. But he's got like spots I can put 12, you know, the 12 volt thing Cigarette in lighters. and he's got okay, yeah. USB things on it. And then he's got these little lights on it. So when he wheels looks, it down the driveway, it's got these lights on it. It just reminds me of like a little robot. That's cute. It, it probably, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we, it was- We played volleyball outside it. it like, I don't know what time it was. It was dark Mid out. Midnight. It was dark out. Turn the lights so the, on. The solar charges those batteries, and then you use the batteries to run the lights or I whatever. Know, a yeah, you could, fan yeah. or whatever you find. Yeah. Well, if you had it at your property, you could take this dolly and you could go, you know, to wherever you're camping and plug in a little refrigerator or a little fan or whatever. It's very small, but it gave us that stepping stone into right. the next. Well, and you got the garage is solar too. Well, that's. Kind of. That's what the robot is plugged into. So I have uh, spotlights on the front of the garage. So they charge okay. us during the day. And then the cheap little controller, it actually has a cool feature on it, which the other ones don't have. But it can actually turn on and output at nighttime. So it actually turns on lights that I have shining in the garage. Oh, nice. So, so that's this where is like another one of your little, our little gateway drugs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it was. Yeah. And How then I think the, the, next, <clears throat> the next step was what everybody's calling these solar generators or they call them portable power units. Like the Jackery, you've heard of Jackery or the Blue Yeti. Jackery's a brand. Oh yeah, name. okay. okay. Yes. And um, so you can get small ones, you can get big ones. Uh, we bought one through a kickstart program. It took six months for us to get it. So it was delayed and it was a big unit. So it come okay. with five solar panels. I think it was $2,500 when we bought it. Mm. But I still have that till today. So that's a portable unit I carry around with me. And that's probably the simplest thing for someone to get into. Probably even portable more. units. Yeah. Yeah. Solar okay. generator. Um, for someone in their house, they could just plug in to their house and charge. So they don't need any panels. Or your car. Uh, or your car. Or if you want to be off grid, you know, camping for the weekend, you have a panel or two or, or get the most. I got five, which was the most. Um, you can use that to charge your unit. And then run your CPAP machine at night or a fan. You pump up your air mattress with them. Um, the one that we got is big enough. It could run a refrigerator overnight. Right. I know like truckers and stuff use a lot of 12 volt. That's how we've found. We've done some car camping. So we yeah. have like a 12 volt <laughs> fan for when it gets hot. You know, that's how we yeah. found it is just by looking through trucker sites. And or if you just Google 12 volt, you find yeah. a lot of Cool. <laughs> at the truck stops they have a lot of 12 volt appliances so they got yeah. 12 refrigerators and stuff and then if you do it that way you don't need the solar generator like we're talking about okay no you would use a solar generator well you can plug off of your car your battery so yeah. the truckers right. they truckers leave the trucks running all the time so right but you could use those with solar panels somehow right oh yeah that's yeah, yeah you can charge them and like for yeah. when you're doing your camping you know, you could use it to run whatever you need to while you're camping. Matter of fact, when we were at, we were, we were up in the mm -hmm. state land. Mm -hmm. I have a little portable washing machine that I used off of our little box. 
I'm wow. out in the middle of nowhere and I was Washing able clothes. to wash a load of laundry. Wow. That's you know, handy. that's creature comfort things. Um, that's very handy. But yeah. This solar generator, to your point, has a, a cigarette lighter on. So the okay. cigarette lighter lets you run the DC appliances you're talking about, but it okay. also has the inverter that lets you run AC appliances like our washer. Okay, so you can just like plug anything in, like a regular yeah. wall plug. Okay, right. AC, DC, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> My husband would totally get all of this, but maybe <laughs> it's good that I'm the one interviewing you because there's probably uh, other people out there that are like me and have no clue. Right. Yep. So you guys, but you guys, you said you have some in your garage or no? That little robot, the hardware. Okay, the little robot. Yeah. So then you built this this um, camper. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have gotten into doing a lot of off grid camping, and then Sonia, you do off grid uh, cooking. I'm really interested too in hearing about your setup that you made for for running that trailer. And still like cooking and kind of having a pretty normal life in that. Yep. That's pretty cool. Very normal life. Matter of fact, we stayed with Mark and Jill. Um, one of the Baker kids, Green Acres. Baker's Green Acres. One of the kids took us out to help corral the, the cows. And the kid jumps over the fence and he gets ready to do this major kick. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I was going to kick that. And it was a puffball mushroom. And I said, what are you doing? Yeah. And I said, let me see it. And it was a, it was a, it was a, well, yeah. And so I opened it up and I'm like, dude, that's a fresh, he's like, what do you do with it? I'm like, I can make soup or something out of it. So then we get back and Mark starts, I showed Mark and he's like, you can eat those. And I'm like, yeah. So then he showed us his, uh, mushroom oh, garden. Oh yeah. Wine caps and some shiitakes. Yeah, I think. He does. And so I said, Hey, do you guys want to come back later on for lunch? So I was able to take the mushrooms, some of our freeze dried stuff, and then all three mushrooms, all three mushrooms, and literally, <clears throat> and then they had some um, bread come in. So I'm like, can I grab a couple loaves of that bread? And so I made croutons using the um, air fryer. I used electric to run our induction, our little induction stove, and okay. I made. Yeah, and so well, these I, are pretty high power things. I mean, an air fryer is pretty absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and then the night before that, we I checked our batteries. We were like at ninety eight percent, so no problems. Looked at the weather for the next day. If we know, like we always check the weather. Like if if I know tomorrow we're going to get rain, I probably am not going to to turn my oven on for three hours to bake the cakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I did is I baked a three layer cake for them. So I can only put one layer in at a time. So it's like oh, okay. 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. So basically right. it ends up running for three hours. Right. And so I was able to run, run the big air fryer, do the, I mean, I made a big stock, we, we fed seven people soup. So I used the bigger pot and, left and well, we had a little bit of leftovers, yeah. but to be able to saute the, the burger, right. you know, the vegetables. So are you them. using electric or gas when you're sauteing? I was all electric. Okay. For that day, for that particular day, I used the induction okay. uh, burner, which I don't know what that pulls, but we have a lot of redundancy in the trailers because, um, you know, if we have, we know we're going to have a couple of days of rain, Right. Yes, I'm going to cook with the propane or the butane. Okay. Um, it just depends. If um, it's really hot, I'll throw the solar oven out there. It just depends. We, I mean. So, so we're just, the solar was the last thing I actually got installed on the trailer. So okay. I'm not 100% done with the trailer, but the solar is installed now. So this was really the first, well, it was 12 days we were out. The first run with completely solar. And I think no. Sonia was more worried about running out of power, but I wasn't. So. Do you store any of it or are you running solely off of solar? Or are you there's there's, the batteries. Batteries. there's okay. batteries on there. So and I'll explain it here in a second. But so she was so worried about losing power and, you know, using too much. I think through her whole cooking exercise, because it was during the day and we were still charging with the solar. I think we only lost 2% of power. Oh, so, wow. And that's we, with running the AC. So running the we, AC, the the stove. We had a 90, 98 degree day, was it? What oh, was that? It was, I, 
I don't think it was 96. Cold. It said 96 on our thermostat. So, I mean, so while I'm, you know, doing a little bit of prep inside, I had the air just enough to take the ugly out of it. Okay. Um, so you have air conditioning as well. Yeah. yeah. And he, yeah, we had a 38 degree morning. And so we, you know, just got us a little bit warmer, but yeah, I mean, really there was, I mean, I ran the blow dryer in the morning if I wanted to do my, you know, blow dry my hair. Okay. Coffee and pot. you have like a bathroom in there too? Yeah. Yep. A shower and everything is inside, inside the camper or it's not like outside. Okay. It's, it, it, we have it inside, but if, if we're in a position where we can be outside, I'll just take, it's like a dry toilet. Okay. Just take the toilet outside and. Just so we don't have that extra right. stuff. Is it and composting extra... or is it like a, just a contained unit? It's It depends on the situation where we're at. If we're out on state land, we'll dig a hole, cat hole. You know, we just do our business in there and then dispose of the, of the toilet paper or burn it or whatever. Um, if we're in the trailer, we have a different methods of uh, disposing of it. Okay. So Every, then... everything we do is there's many different ways to do it. So yeah. I do have a shower curtain, a shower pan in the bathroom, in, inside the trailer. But why put the moisture in the trailer right. if it's nice outside? Right. So we have a pop-up shower tent outside. Um, I think I've never seen, seen that. I think yeah, I got a video that. of, I did a real quick pan through of like, you know, how we kind of set up our, you know, like our kitchen. Right. And if weather is not good, I can do all of that in the camper. And now the thing is, is like, we're still undecided we took a good year of camping, rearranging our furniture in there, rearranging it again. This is not working to come out with this layout. And we still don't have a sink in the trailer because I don't know. I don't know if I need it there. You know, right. am I, can I just do the, you know, the dish pan method? I mean, just we're still trying to play with that to figure out if we need it or we don't need it. I we mean, wash in a trailer. And I think we use less water that way. If we were to have sinks, we would use Because you guys, you guys, I don't know if we said this, but you guys actually took a utility trailer and turned yep. it yep. into My something fault. to live into. So it was, it's not a camper with like oh, yeah. a black tank and a no. gray water and stuff. <laughs> this is just like a utility trailer. So it's a, I'll, I'll explain the trailer. Yeah. So the, the trailer was a, it's a seven by 14 V nose. It's a cargo trailer. So it's like what you would put a four wheeler in or a motorcycle in. They just plywood floor. They had D rings on the floor. The back door tilts down. It's a ramp. So you can drive into drive right. your vehicle or whatever into the trailer. It's a double axle, uh, which I would highly recommend. Yeah. If one tire goes flat or blows out, you still have the other three. <laughs> I'm always leery of the single axle trailers, but the double axle gives us more carry capacity too. So it's a, a seven foot. It was just aluminum paneling on the outside, uh, ribs on the inside. They were one inch thick. Uh, through our experimenting and stuff, we slept that way. There was some insulation, some pink foam board on the inside, some of the reflectics, which is aluminum with the bubble foil with the bubble over the bubbles. We went out winter camped one time, it was 20 degrees outside, and we had a propane heater and electric heater running off a generator, and the warmest we could get it inside the trailer was 40 degrees. Ooh, not fun. So that was with <laughs> the insulation that was in there when we bought it. Somebody else had put it in there. So it was a used trailer. So we took all that out. Uh, I added one, one, well, two by two, so it's an inch and a half by inch and a half square pieces of board that I added so I could gain extra room for spray foam insulation. So we have two and a half inches of spray foam insulation in the trailer. Uh, I think the major importance of the spray foam is to minimize the mold. Because a lot of times you get mold oh, yeah. the insulation yeah. and the paneling. So if I'm attached to the paneling, the spray foam stuck to the paneling. There shouldn't be a spot for mold to form. Right. So that was one of the reasons. And then the spray foam on all the walls, on the ceiling, and I actually did it underneath the trailer. So I got probably about three and a half inches of insulation underneath the trailer for the floor. And then we lined everything with plastic and then we put up the wall paneling. So the plastic is a vapor barrier, but it, it also improves performance for the air conditioners. Okay. We have, we have no windows. So every window you add is basically no insulation. Right, yeah, for sure. So we have no windows. 
and we have a mini split air conditioning unit in there. So the mini split doesn't need to run very hard to cool down our trailer. So that was one of the important things. So when we sized it, that was one thing we said we wanted was to have an air conditioner and solar and batteries to be able to run, run those. So that's how I sized what I needed. So we have 12,000 kilowatt hours of batteries. So some people that might not mean anything, but that's pretty big. Okay. For, so if anybody is listening who knows what that is, they don't know how big that is. So it's 12,000 kilowatt hours. And that's, that's quite a bit. The electronics that I have in there are what they use on boats and it's been around for a long time. So Victron is the brand. They're probably the more expensive type units, but I wanted something that was proven, proven, time tested, something that was going to work. So I spent more money, you know, getting that many batteries and then getting the Victron equipment in there. And then I got 22 panels. So being a seven by 14 foot trailer, that's not a lot of real estate to put panels. So yeah. there's four, 14 panels are on one layer. Then I had eight panels below that layer. That Those eight panels actually slide out and they're a roof or a canopy over top of our deck. Okay. That, that ramp that comes down, that ramp, I put some feet on it so I can level it off. And now it's a rear deck for us. And we okay, have a camera. I've seen field. some of this in video, but I don't think I've seen the slide out. That'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah I'm getting sure. ready to put those videos out. Okay. So now that I got it done, I'll start putting out the That's video. That's quite this setup. So, yeah. yeah. So 800 watts additional that slide out. Um, if I need to, you know, we can slide it out to charge the batteries. But if we're driving down the road, so because it's so well insulated, I leave the air conditioner on even while we're driving. So it doesn't get too hot in there because we have a refrigerator in there too. So okay. The refrigerator is going to work harder if it's hot inside right. the trailer. Plus if we got chocolate in the drawers. I don't want the chocolate. To <laughs> of course not. Yes. Got to keep so the treats safe. We, we leave the air conditioner on, you know, I think I put it either 78 or 80, depending on. Well, we've had the refrigerator plugged in and running since right. Mark's since event. Tries, so yeah. Two, try two whatever. Months. Months. Just, yeah, I mean, whatever, I've got extra whatever in there, and yeah, it, it, it doesn't even touch it. But with the with the bakery and stuff, we have right. freezers in the house anyways, so I just have How hard storage. is it to go down the road with that? It doesn't hurt it to have the airflow when you're driving down the road on those panels, huh? It probably yeah. would if you, if it wasn't well, well built. Right, okay. So when, when I bought the trailer first, the guy had put in the, the insulation and he had a little bed, he had air conditioner unit in there. He had a cheap inverter and a couple of car batteries in there. And he had one solar panel on the roof and he had it glued to the roof. So there's no screws on the roof, but solar panels don't work really good when they get hot underneath. So you're supposed to have an air gap underneath them. So the structure that I built, and I'll put, you'll be able to see that in these videos. Uh, it's built on extruded aluminum, 8020 is the brand name. And I got it bolted on there pretty good. And just the structure is really strong. Okay. It's probably strong as steel on there. And then you do have those. And wind. it's lighter. So I have probably 10 inches underneath the panels. And then I also put a wind deflector on the front of it. So okay. it's a little ramp for the wind yep. to hit it and then go over the panels instead of underneath it. Okay. So I have it set so some wind can get underneath, but the majority of it goes over top. Okay. And this this last trip, the 12 days, every time we were on the road, I kept turning my mirrors and <laughs> pointing up so I could see what was going on and nothing was shaking or doing yeah. anything. So it was, it was really strong. Well, that's good. So is this something, just thinking right now, say your power went out at your house that you're currently in. Could you back that trailer up next to your house and somehow use some of that? To we could run a cord in. Yeah. And bounce between freezers and refrigerator or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I know it takes a lot. One of the things I think I know people don't understand is to power a modern day house would take tons of stuff. But if you just needed to run like your freezer to keep your yep. quarter cow from thawing, you guys could somehow use that. That's almost like a little portable bed. A, it is exactly what it is. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, for a homesteader like you guys, this works, this is kind of perfect because you built this mobile unit, but you can also use it 
if your power goes out for a few days at your house. Exactly. And, that's, and we I can mean, sleep in it. And we can sleep. Well, the thing is, <laughs> right, people, yeah. for the amount of money that you spent to do that, you could have just went and bought a mobile home or, you know, a, a, what do they call those? Camping trailers? Camping. Campers. Pardon. Yeah. And the thing is, is, you know, you you saw the, the campers that were at uh, the campground that we were at. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. You know, yeah, they're pretty, yeah, they're neat. But you look at that cargo trailer and, you, and somebody says that's a tiny house. You're like, wait, what? It was just kind of that neat factor, kind of incognito. Um, and then when you go in the side, you're like, there's no freaking way that this is a house, you know, a, a living quarters anyway. And so we kind of wanted that stealth factor of it. Um, we're well, you're of, way more insulated than the than campers are. Right. Well, and the thing is, too, is yeah. the campers are not meant to be lived in day in and day out. No, they really built not. them. Um, I've cleaned a couple because I, I have a cleaning yeah. business and people know that. I've cleaned a few and um, the quality is right. not there, especially actually in the newer ones. The older ones, actually, like in the they 80s and better. 90s, those things were tanks. Right. But um. The quality isn't there. So you guys probably have better quality and you're very insulated. And it's what we yeah. want. It was, exactly. you, know, yeah. I, you know, I could go into a trailer and be like, oh, that's really cool, but that wouldn't work for our needs. And yeah. so I, we do, I want something different. I don't want to be like everybody else. Um, well, I think it's really cool. It's even fun. The, even the RVs, the big RVs that have, you know, when you go to a park, you could plug into a 30 amp service or you can plug into a 50 right. amp service. And some of them have their own diesel generators. And, yeah. Yeah. But most of them, I, I guess I can't say for sure, but I think most of them might have two air conditioners on the roof. But you can only run one of them if you're plugged into a generator or into your house. You have to be in an RV park that has 50 amp service to, to run, to both, run of them. both of them. Yeah. And, you know, even to just run one, they still have to run a generator or something. But right. We don't have to plug in anything. We didn't use any money on our trip. We actually did use, again, because I think Sonia was a little nervous about using too much of the power. She used propane a couple of times. And well, we also, we were cloudy for two days. Yeah, so and so I started watching the, those numbers drop. And I'm like, we're getting close to the 50% mark. He's like, go use it. And I'm like, <laughs> so I went outside to like let my hair dry. He's like, you're fine. But I'm like, I, I want to play with the propane, the, so the propane put, burner to make our meal. Just right. so, she, so right now we still have propane burner in the in the truck and even in the trailer. But the goal was to be able to not spend any money on our trips. Well, the other thing too is, like I said, you're when you have an RV, they're not insulated well, so you're running that right air conditioner or the heater almost nonstop once it gets below 45 degrees. I know because we actually have a camper. Right. Yeah. <laughs> once it gets cold or hot, that runs all the time. So it's a major power use because yeah. they're not super insulated because they're not meant to be lived in. Right. And then on top of it, um, if you have a generator hooked up to it, that's noise where you guys just have that peace and quiet. You mean Absolutely. you go to the woods and yeah, yeah. or like even at home. Right. It's nice to not hear that generator running all the time when if right. the power goes out at home. I think you don't the have big, to store gas. Right. And that's the big thing for me is, you know, it's easy to run back and take a shower, turn my water on. But if I don't have power, how do we stay clean? And in a situation like if we're here, you know, we've got our rain barrels attached to the house. Well, how do you warm that water up? right? If you can't just flip that switch. And so we've learned different ways to, to do the creature comforts. Yeah. So that right there is a whole skill in itself, adjusting your lifestyle to right. less power consumption and using different tools to accomplish right. the same goal. Right. And the thing is, is like, uh, we spent one Christmas, I don't know, was it eight or 10 days? We didn't have power here. Yeah. Just you know, DTE will get out when DTE can get out. And everybody in this, in the county was out of power. That's a little scary. So, yeah. you know, you can read, oh yeah, I can put a pot of water over some fire, but people don't realize how long it actually takes 
to boil water, to get that bird bath. And how many bath. gallons you use. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. so as a matter of fact, it's kind of funny because people ask how we do it now. And um, I actually use a sous vide to do oh. our, our shower water because I can okay. set the I can set the temperature when the temperature gets up, the machine stops. I've so, got 109 degree wa of water. So, so what do you do? How do, where do you carry your water then? Do you have big tanks? There's six. We have six five gallon portable tanks. That they Not stack much. and he built them. Again, we kind of laid out how much space do we have? So they fit perfectly. And then what I do for running the water is I have USB um, button faucets, if you will. So I took the hose off, which they're only about like this. Oh, long. okay. So yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So and you guys have all of these in your all of this in your videos, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. Well, uh, if, if they're not there, they're going to be. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so I run the long hose down into the, the the cubes so we don't have to rearrange them. I mean, that's 40 pounds, 50 pounds per thing. Oh, yeah, they're heavy. <laughs> Yeah, so I just run the, the hose down there, change them out when I need them. I, I mean, we just have the system down. So if right. anybody doesn't have the USB little faucets, amazing. I've seen it's them. Charging. I actually bought one. I have a, you can get them that attach to the water ones too that are battery operated too. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yours is just a UB, USB, yeah. Char you charge it by the USB. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's the same thing you're talking about. It goes on top of the little five yeah, yeah. containers. Actually, the bathroom setup, um, the sink in there has one, so you can kind of see how it's done. Okay. In the video. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. so, we, yeah. Run, we run one of those in the bathroom. Um, yeah, because I mean, I hauled water all summer to water treat these trees that I put in at our property, and um, since we don't have any water out there wells and so everything's done by 55 gallon barrels in my two little legs <laughs> on yep. the acres and 50 trees all summer long water is heavy, heavy and you use a lot more of it than you think you do <laughs> a lot i mean it is amazing how much you just turn that faucet on and you don't realize how much you use yeah so i mean i think it it's definitely eye-opening when you guys start doing something like this but i think it's all something we need to think about i mean we've been warned that the grid is not right um what do you, what's the word they're using stable not stable, stable. yeah there we go yeah. lot stable there's a lot of places struggling with that and um you know we don't get need to get into politics of why not but right we need to be ready right for that i mean i've got meat and freezers and um you know, but it's also fun to be able to go camp and do stuff like you guys need to do, or you can go see your kids or right. whatever. And I think these are, you guys, like you said, you could just roll this up and use it at your house if you need to, yeah. or it can go. I love the idea. I had never considered the idea of having a mobile unit. Yeah. And once that clicked to me that you guys can use this for that and at your house. I just, I love that. Right. It's almost like those huge generators DTE carries behind their trucks, but yeah. you guys can live in it. And yeah. Have, I think it's like a perfect setup. So, I mean, does this pertain to homesteading? I think it does, even though it's mobile and you're not off grid at your house, you can use this as a backup. Right. Yeah. So again, we wanted to be prepared in multiple ways. So we have the trailer. I have a solar generator that, I'm sorry, yeah, a solar generator, the portable power unit that I have five panels. So I carry that in my truck, but I also have my truck is built and you can see this on our YouTube videos. I showed that on, there's a multiple series on there. I built the truck. It has three panels on the, on the topper. I have a battery inside the bed of the truck. Okay. And so the truck itself, uh, there was one drawer and it, so I have out. four six and a half foot drawers that slide out of the truck. And in one of the drawers, we have that set up with cooking equipment in there also. So if I don't have a trailer with me, we go out on a day run. Uh, we can pull over at a park and, and cook. Well, we can pull over wherever and cook. Um, so we, we can do everything out of the truck too, though. I mean, we could do the showers. We can do potty. Okay. You know, we've got a potty that pops out. Audi, I got a solar cooker in there. I got the rocket stove is in there. Um, so 
So do you got, did you make the rocket stove or did you purchase it? We purchased the rocket stove. I, and then the I, same with the solar oven. I know that, yeah. I know the answer to the solar oven, but you yeah. purchased that as well. Yeah, the, the rocket stove, I initially was like, oh, I don't know if I want to spend the money on that thing. Am I really going to use it? Or, you know, so I made one out of some tin cans and I was like, ooh, this is really cool. I couldn't believe what I could, you know, what I could do. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, if I can throw together a cheap one and it works, um, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I wanted to make sure that if I put these little bitty twigs in there, that I could actually get heat and boil water. And I could. So then I started reading reviews on these other ones. And um, I knew what I didn't like about the one that I made. It was hard to pull the ashes out, how to keep it clean. Um, so your airflow goes in there good. So when I started looking for them, I knew that I wanted a clean out spot in the, in the bottom. I knew, um, I just knew there were certain things that I was looking for. And I happened to find one that met most of my criteria. The only difference is I wanted, I wanted some legs on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was able to, he fixed me up that way. But so yeah, I ended up finding a rocket stove and this thing's mean. I, I think it was like $130 maybe. I can boil water and literally, I just walk around my yard and pick up sticks that have fallen. And I might have a, you know, a bundle like this of just twigs that are no bigger than my thumb. We cut those up and just feed that into this rocket stove. I've got hot water for shower, for dishes. You throw cast iron on there and literally, you know that. Right. It's like, it's right. like a flush when you hear that. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just, I think it's kind of cool to be able to do it. It's easy yeah. to go over and turn a, a button on my stove. Right. Yeah. But what happens when I can't? Well, I, we actually built a rocket stove one year to can, or not to can, to do maple syrup in our okay. yard. My husband just used bricks and yep. we were floored. We actually yep. warped, thankfully it was not a very expensive pot, but we actually got that pot so heavy, we warped the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. And Isn't it, that cool? We were using old trim. We bought our house. It had old, very dark trim. We were using the old trim, probably not healthy to burn, but whatever. We... <laughs> And we were using up old trim this fuel. and it was a big pot of maple syrup and it was cool? fantastic. So having yeah. one that's portable and then you carry this around on your, so your truck is like almost like a smaller version of your trailer. Yeah. Yep. And yep. I think I saw you built like this pretty amazing uh, cabinet tree system under the, in yeah, the, the kind of into the wheel wells in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very yeah the drawers pull out, and I, you know, and then he's got little things that come out the back, so that's like little tables in there, and so we have what are those things we sit on? Well, it's a it's a aluminum platform that you stand like the paint in your in so your house. It's, it folds out, the two side legs fold out, but it's a three foot wide platform. So you can use it, you know, he uses it for like home repairs and stuff or whatever, nice. but it also it's doubles a as a, a bench for when we pull those uh, long pieces of wood out. So okay. a lot of the stuff that we have, it's got to have multiple, multiple purposes, purposes, you know, right. it doesn't make sense to store chairs in there when we have the bench, the bench, you know, that whatever. So, so yeah, we, with your, with your website, and your YouTube channel, what is your goal? Is your goal to teach other people how to do this or entertainment? Uh, Are you guys, I mean, because you guys obviously have multiple talents and gifts and um, together you're like the perfect, you know, <laughs> the perfect homestead pair here. <laughs> uh, I think the, yeah, I mean, it's always been teaching, um, like we were telling Mark, when, when my husband built this kitchen, it's a 28 by 28 kitchen. And he built it. I've got a long island down the center. And he pretty much built the kitchen so that we've got an open space on the one side so that I can teach. Um, and then COVID hit. So that kind of put a, you know, a little hoopla in that. But I think it's, you know, the, the teaching and the classes and then, you know, consulting um, could, be a, could be a bunch of anything. Um, things seem to be evolving uh, pretty pretty nicely for us that way. Uh, matter of fact, yesterday I had a gal post something on Facebook that she was looking for rice dream milk. Her child's got a lot of allergies. 
Okay. He couldn't find it. And I'm thinking, rice, rice milk. milk. Yeah. Rice milk. Simple and then. so I was like, you can make that. I can teach you. And she's like, really? You can make that? And so every day there's opportunities to teach. It's just now we yeah. just need to, how do you do it? You know, right, so right. where we're at. Um, the yeah. other thing I was talking to Mark about was, and I had told him my story on the, you know, even just making pudding. And uh, people don't really know how to pantry cooking. And so, yeah, uh, we're fairly new into making the videos and I'm just getting out of my busy season. So um, I feel like we're going to be able to start ramping up on the videos and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive when we first launched the YouTube because it says off grid. Um you know, and anybody knows we live in a conventional house. I have my business out of the house and Jill had said it good that it's an umbrella. So we're focusing on that, but there's a lot that, uh, goes under that umbrella with being, uh, with the off grid trailer. Um, and we're kind of going to kind of do it for us, you know, business wise are, are, is your, is that what you're saying? Like your cake business is under the same umbrella as your off grid, or do you have different businesses going on? Um, Cause that's kind of what's going on with me right now. <laughs> selfishly. It is very much what's going on. And at one point I had thought, um, it, it would be a good opportunity, even for like a stay at home mom to learn how can you, you know, do a small business out of your, you know, a small baking or cake business right. out of your home while you're running the garden, while you're tending to the kids, while, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and and in, in, in the course that we took, they did say that your channel and your business will evolve into where, wherever it needs to go. And so. Right. The, the, cake, the cake business was a standalone business to begin with. Right. right. So these are kind of two separate businesses, but there's yeah. no reason why we can't show or share or Right. No. Well, and you could have your own, like, um, like Sonia has Sonia. I keep saying, so I don't That's know, okay. why I'm saying that, but um, you have your niche, which is similar to mine, although I do not bake gorgeous cakes like you do. And then you have your handyman, which is another skill that so many people are lacking in. Right. Um, you know, being able to help people learn even you know, that those cabinets under your tray, your, under your bed of your truck. I mean, that's an advanced skill, Yeah. you know, and so people learning how to do that. And have you ever seen, um, Joel Salatin put out a book called Polyface Designs, and it's a book like this thick, full of plans oh. with oh all God. of the parts and drawings and schematics on how to make like his chicken tractors and stuff oh. like that. I mean, you could easily do stuff like that and even just sell yeah plan. you don't have to do the book but you could sell pdfs of certain things with all of you know the parts and everything but um there's so many opportunities and i think i think it's i'm really excited to see what you guys do with, with yep. your business and you're such an asset to other people because there's so many people that um want to learn all of these things again it's right. the homestead movement i feel like is in the diy movement has just like exploded yeah it sure has um, yeah so i'm really excited to to see you guys grow in that and um is there anything else that you wanted to mention why we're on no, we just we're getting started on the YouTube, Facebook group, uh, Instagram, so people can follow us on there. We'll yeah, and them. I will put those. You guys are going to send those to me, and we can put those in the show notes. But if you wanted to mention them verbally um, uh, for the podcast, in, in all of them, it's off grid with Dave and Sonia. Okay. So in the Facebook group, it's a private group, so you got to join. Uh, YouTube, it's off grid with Dave and Sonia. Same with Instagram. The other thing too that we really do a focusing on is the uh, food food preservation aspect of homesteading. Um, we don't we only have five acres here, which five acres is huge for gardening, fruits, and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, but once you have that stuff, what do you do with it? Right. Um, we also uh, are going to channels concentrate on um, maybe sharing some bartering skills with people because okay. I don't have access here. 
to necessarily growing a cow, feeding a cow out, that kind of stuff. We've got two different neighbors that have cattle that we, you know, we barter with. Um, I'm friends with the gal that owns the slaughterhouse. So um, networking for things, you know, with right. people for things that I, can, yeah, that I can't do or, you know, we're not interested in doing. Um, I'm it, my daughter's interested in doing the, the cows and the pigs and um, right you know, that kind of stuff. But those are going to be kind of the things that we talk about um, and share on our channel. So if anybody has questions, you know, specifically this freeze drying thing is kind of going crazy for us on yeah. our end. Um, and what we do is we are an affiliate. It doesn't cost you or the person buying the freeze dryer anything additional. Um, Harvest Right does give us a little bit of a kickback. Oh, okay. And then what we do is kind of like if you buy a freeze dryer through us, then if you have any problems, it's hard to get a hold of Freeze Right, freeze, the Freeze Right company. Okay. And if it's a simple question, har harvest, harvest right. right. As I say, freeze right. Freeze right. Harvest right. Um, so what we do is, you know, we I tell the girls or whoever has purchased it, you know, just run the question by, and if we can help you, we can. Um, we're just starting out with a Zoom. We're going to do a Zoom meeting of the people that have them. You oh, know, please. do you have any questions? What are you doing? How are you preserving it? Um, that kind of stuff. But I mean, even yeah. the same thing can go along with canning that. Right. You know, exactly. if somebody's new and has questions or even the dehydrator, um, I've been doing it for so long. I'm like, this is really not something. But then I have to remember that if I've got somebody brand spanking new, you forget what you don't know and where you're right. coming from. Yeah. Right. And so anything like that, we are definitely uh, going to be moving towards trying to implement those kind of skills and teaching those. Wonderful. Those kind of things. It sounds like you guys got a lot going on. and. Um... Yeah, I think, are you guys, so you guys are in lower Michigan, I'm in upper Michigan, but we're still in the, the lower peninsula. You guys thinking about doing any classes, like, in yeah. person? Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah, we're in the middle of the thumb. So. Okay, so I didn't know if you wanted to reveal that or not, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you did fine. Yeah, that's fine. The middle of the thumb's pretty big, so. Right, yeah. And yeah. with the cake business, it's not hard to find us, you know, that's so. true. That is true. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Now that COVID is done and uh, not done, but COVID is anyways. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are, we are talking about, we're actually talking about doing a um, sauerkraut class. Fun. Yeah. Very so fun. just, you know, that's pretty, pretty simple. And I say simple, pretty simple because I know how to do it, but right. yeah. you know, for somebody that doesn't know how to do it, um, you know, I thought that might be a good stepping stone to getting somebody, yeah. you know, started in that arena. That's, and I, and it's, it's so needed. Like all of these things are, are so needed and, um, you know, the slow move food movement and it's so much healthier to cook from scratch and just for, for many reasons, it's just, yeah, I think this will be fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you guys and, um, I guess I have everything I need to ask and we will, um, see you guys around since we actually know each other outside of this podcast i'll see you guys right. around and do you guys have any i already asked you this but do you have any leaving i usually leave with a little saying do you guys have anything that you want to say right as we close no okay I just, <laughs> no i just say until next time we're out right. of here well <laughs> This has been a great podcast and we will talk to you later and grow where you're planted. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.